PT-76 is a Soviet amphibious light tank designed in 1948 which saw service from 1952 up until its gradual retirement from 1967 onwards, partly replaced by the more versatile BMP-1 APC. Characterised by a wide hull and water jet propulsion, the PT-76 offered excellent amphibious capabilities. It was, however, plagued by a large silhouette, weak armour protection and an underpowered 76mm gun. Despite these flaws, the PT-76 enjoyed a long service life within the Soviet and Russian armed forces, which only placed it into its reserves in 2006. Comparable to other Soviet Cold War vehicles, it has seen combat in several wars and is still in use within smaller armies. Russia is attempting to replace them with the BMP-3F amphibious APC. Hello, my name is Stewie, and today I'll be making my debut narration for the Tanks Encyclopedia YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be covering the development history, design characteristics, and variants of the PT-76. During the Second World War, the Soviet amphibious light tanks left much to desire. The T-37 and T-38 light tanks, armed only with machine guns, were useless against German panzers, while the T-40 light tank, being inadequately armed, simply reinforced the failure of the earlier vehicles. Nonetheless, the end of the war left a state of tension between the USSR and Western nations. It was very likely that Central Europe would become a battlefield in between the two superpowers. However, the geography of this era is problematic for tanks. Riddled with forests, rivers, and marshes, heavy and medium tanks would require mobile bridges and other logistic systems to cross obstacles. The solution was to have a mobile and nimble light tank that could be amphibious. These tanks were to penetrate into enemy territory and scout the environment until the heavier tanks came. Learning from previous mistakes, this new amphibious tank had to be equipped with a powerful gun to make it more useful against enemy armour. Thus, the PT-76 was born, having excellent buoyancy to allow it to cross those water obstacles. On the 10th of June, 1948, the Red Krasnoy Sormovo No. 112 factory was tasked with redesigning the light tank and the APC to be ready for amphibious operations without any prior preparation. The designs were ready by July 1948 and were presented to the GABTU, the main directorate of armoured forces, with promising feedback. On the 16th of July of the same year, the Ministry of Transport Engineering ordered the No. 112 factory to produce two prototypes and test them by June 1949. These vehicles were given the name Object 101 R39 for the light tank and Object 102 BTR R40 for the APC. The R39 prototype was built between April and May 1949 and by 27th of May, testing began. It was found that the centre of gravity was a bit too far back, causing problems in water. The second prototype was ready by June of the same year, with the turret moved forwards by 240mm, 9.4 inches. These prototypes, however, failed the factory tests. Remaining researchers and workers from Krasnoy Sormovo and VN2100 came to CHKZ, Chelyabinsk tractor plant, to continue work on the 15th of August 1949. The blueprints were ready by the 1st of September. Two different sets of drawings were made, one set by Grigory Moskvin and A. Sturkin, named Object 270, and drawings made by L. Troyanov and Nikolai Shashmarin, named Object 740. The latter made Object 750 as well, which was the APC version. To fix the problems encountered on the initial R39, engineers came up with four different solutions. These were propellers and water tunnels, conventionally mounted propellers on hinges, water jets, and lastly, tracked propulsion. Engineers Cotton and L. Troyanov wanted to implement hinged propellers as they had worked on vehicles with this propulsion system before. Shashmarin, however, wanted to implement water jets designed by Nikolai Konowillow. Shashmarin went to the Minister of Medium Machine Building, Vyashilev Malyshev, to get his idea materialised. Malyshev agreed, terminating all other projects for propulsion systems and placing efforts entirely on a vehicle with two water jet engines, the Object 740. Plans in 1 20th scale were drawn on 15th of November 1949, and the first Object 740 prototype was completed in February of 1950. Testing was done on the Object 740 from the 15th of May, and the vehicle passed them by August. After the initial bugs and issues were fixed on the prototypes, it was deemed suitable for adoption in the Soviet military. The decree of USSR, Council of Ministers, in the 23rd of November 1950, assigned the first 10 vehicles to be produced at Stalingrad Tractor Plant, STZ, for which a specialised construction bureau was made, headed by M. M. Romanov. The first 10 units were manufactured between May and June of 1950. These were sent to the Soviet military for active trials with troops, during which refinements and final touches were made. On the decree of USSR Council of Ministers, 6th of August 1952, 
the Object 740 was adopted into service under the name PT-76, Plava Yishi Tank, meaning Floating Tank 76, from the 76mm gun. It was first unveiled to the public on Victory Day, 9th of May, 1952. The tank was mass-produced at STZ, later renamed VGTZ, Volgograd Tractor Plant. The PT-76 was a revolutionary tank for the Soviet Union, yet its basis was very simple. The wide and long hull allowed for excellent buoyancy in water, but it had to sacrifice the armour, which the thickness part being only 15mm on the front of the turret. The engine was placed in the rear, behind the turret. The hull itself was divided into two sections, engine and jets in the rear, and fighting compartment in the front. These were separated by a metal bulkhead. The water jets, two on each side, had an inlet on the floor of the hull and the exit hull in the rear. Two smaller ports on the side were used for propulsion in reverse. The turret had a low profile and had both the commander, who was also the gunner, and the loader. It housed the D-56T 76.2mm gun. In 1957, this was replaced with a D-56TM. The main engine was named the V6, but was a six-cylinder inline four-stroke, water-cooled diesel capable of outputting 240 horsepower at 1,800 RPM. This gave the 14.6 ton tank a power to rate ratio of 16.4 horsepower per ton and allowed it to reach a top speed of 44 kilometers per hour, 27 miles per hour on roads. Despite being used as a reconnaissance tank on many occasions, the PT-76 was not designed with this in mind. It was never equipped for any proper equipment for such tasks and probably one of the most significant drawbacks of the PT-76 was its poor visibility. With a grand total of 11 periscopes, excluding the sight of the main gun, the PT-76 was behind many Soviet tanks of the time. As an example, the T-10 heavy tank had double the amount of vision ports and periscopes. This begs the question, why was the PT-76 used in reconnaissance roles? But the answer is deceptively simple. Soviet doctrine in the 1930s saw amphibious tanks like the T-37A as primarily for reconnaissance purposes. They were light and small, and their poor armament did not allow for any other task to be performed well. The PT-76, however, was much larger than a T-54 and was rather underpowered. Yet the PT-76 was, in fact, used in such missions because it was the only amphibious light tank in the Soviet arsenal. In this sense, it could be considered that the tank design had outpaced an older doctrine of use for tanks in the absence of dedicated reconnaissance vehicles. The light tank had a crew of three, a driver, a loader, and a commander that also operated the gun. The driver was placed centrally in the hull beneath the gun. The commander sat on the left side of the gun in the turret while the loader was on the other side to the right of the turret. The turret ring of the PT-76 was very large, at a diameter of 1,800mm, 6 feet. For reference, the T-34-85's turret ring had a diameter of 1,600mm and T-55 1,850mm. Compared to contemporary Soviet tanks, the large turret ring combined with one less crew member and a smaller caliber gun meant that PT-76 had some of the best ergonomics of its time in the USSR. The PT-76 used a 76mm D-56T gun, developed by Factory No. 9 in 1949 based on the F-32 and ZIS-3 guns. It in fact had identical ballistic capabilities and fired the same ammunition. Both the F-32 and ZIS-3 were deemed obsolete by the end of World War II, and rightfully so. Their replacement with 85mm and larger guns could be seen with the T-34-85. In 1937, an 85mm gun was wanted but due to the weight reduction to only 15 tons, a 76mm gun had to be used. It is noteworthy to mention that the doctrine of the PT-76 meant that this otherwise obsolete tank gun was enough. The purposes of the PT-76 were to support troops during amphibious landing by neutralising machine gun nests and recoilless rifles and other soft targets. If the PT-76 was to face tanks, it would be other poorly armoured light tanks and World War II era medium tanks, not MBTs or heavy tanks. The gun could depress 3.5 degrees, minus 4 according to other sources, and elevate 31 degrees. Executing a complete rotation of the turret took around 21 seconds with manual hand crank. The gun was also capable of indirect fire, with an azimuth sight. It was capable of firing 15 rounds per minute, but most loaders managed 6 to 8 rounds per minute. As mentioned earlier, the PT-76 mobility and top speed are not as impressive as other light tanks of the era, focusing more on its amphibious aspect. The main engine was a V6, six-cylinder, inline, four-stroke, water-cooled diesel capable of delivering 240 horsepower at 1,800 RPM. This engine was a simplified version, literally cut in half, of a well-known V2 engine used in the T-34, KV, and IS tanks. Originally, a T-34 transmission was proposed, but a more complex one was needed to power the water jets. Thus, a new transmission was created, 
specifically for the PT-76. Nonetheless, it was similar to that to the T-34, a manual shaft transmission with four gears forwards and one in reverse. It also used a simple clutch braking steering system. This engine gave the 14.6 tonne vehicle a power to rate ratio of 16.4 horsepower a tonne, a top speed of 44 kilometers per hour, and a range of up to 400 kilometers, 249 miles. Originally, the wheels were made out of smooth, surfaced, stamped steel, but slowly got replaced by wheels with stamped reinforcement ribs. These wheels were hollow on the inside, helping the buoyancy of the PT-76. The indentations in the wheel improved traction in snowy or muddy environments. The most important feature on the PT-76 was its ability to swim. A lot was sacrificed on the tank to allow this, like the smaller gun and little armour, combined with a longer and wider hull. The system worked by using two main jets with openings in the floor of the tank. Water would be pumped up and propelled out the back of the vehicle, through two holes, creating thrust. To steer, either one of the holes was shut. For example, to turn to the right, the right hole was closed while the left was still running, causing the vehicle to slew to the right. Closing the ports to the jets forced the water to exit under pressure through the ports on the side, forcing the water forwards. When reversing, both rear jet holes were shut, redirecting the water to the two smaller ports on the side of the vehicle. With amphibious assaults and reconnaissance in mind, the PT-76 armour protection was comparable to other amphibious armoured vehicles of the time. This was considered enough to protect from small arms fire or fragmentation, though the overall level of protection was still relatively poor compared to other light tanks of the time. By far the most important and extensive change to the PT-76 during its service life was the PT-76 Model 1957, also known as the PT-76B. Developed at STZ with Chief Designer S.A. Fedorov, this new upgrade received the name Object 740B. The primary upgrade was to the gun, changing from the D-56T to the D-56TM. A new German-style muzzle brake was given. The previous slotted muzzle brake blew the gases towards the rear at very high pressures, potentially harming infantry riding on the tank. As Soviet doctrine implied the PT-76 was to carry 20 infantrymen over bodies of water and still be able to engage targets afloat, the last thing it needed was to have the infantry fall off or be injured because of the muzzle blast. Around the 1960s, many older Soviet AFVs underwent major changes, the ISU-152 and T-54 being good examples. The PT-76 was no exemption, and throughout the 1960s, significant changes were made. The main improvement with the upgrade was the D-56TS gun. This new gun had a two-plane stabiliser name, STP-2P Zaya, allowing the gun to stay locked on a horizontal and vertical level, but also on one chosen by the gunner. It had two modes, automatic and semi-automatic. Automatic mode was used in combat, with the entire system running. Semi-automatic was used during stabilisation failure, and was considerably slower. Throughout its service life, the PT-76 suffered from a handful of fundamental issues that could not be solved through minor upgrades. Firstly, the main 76mm gun was not seen as powerful enough to be ineffective against the more modern western tanks, like the Patton and Centurion. Secondly, the very thin armour combined with a large hull made it a very vulnerable vehicle, regardless of its use on the battlefield. Lastly, it had poor scouting abilities, being very loud, tall, and without proper scouting equipment. The obsolescence of the PT-76 was becoming more and more apparent at the end of the 1950s, with new and better armoured western tanks appearing. Soviet designers got working on several solutions, fixing fundamental issues in different ways, either armament or size. However, their complexity, price, and the development of the BMP-1 cancelled them all. As the PT-76 offered a light and versatile chassis, especially designed to be easily redesigned for other uses, it branched off into other variants. The main one was the BTR-50, co-designed with the PT-76 from the very start. Later in the 50s and 60s, as the effectiveness, popularity and threat of missiles became larger and larger, various close to long range missile systems were made based on the PT-76 chassis, like the ballistic missile launchers 2K1 Mars and 2K6 Luna, but also defensive surface to air missile systems, like the 2K12 Cub. Various conventional systems were also designed, like the short air defense ZSU-23-4 Shilka, airborne assault gun ASU-85, or GSP Mobile Ferry. The PT-76 was excellent at what it was designed for, swimming. However, this came at the price of sacrificing essentially all other combat capabilities. As the only light tank in the Soviet arsenal, it could not perform deep penetration within enemy lines, or take on other medium tanks or MBTs while it waited for the heavier tanks to arrive. The 76mm gun was, at best, satisfactory at the time of development, but it was clear that it would be obsolete quickly. Unfortunately for the light tank, it never got to be used for what it was designed for. Eastern and Central European fields and swamps, 
but rather in a variety of other wars and low-intensity conflicts in other parts of the world, from Vietnam to South Africa. Given the specific niche it was designed for, it is perhaps inevitable that these non-Soviet users ended up using it incorrectly. These deficiencies in its use were highlighted when it was pitted against other tanks and especially handheld anti-tank weapons. Alternatively, its bad reputation was mostly caused by bad doctrine and poor usage rather than bad design, but this is a debatable point. Although when employed correctly, like the Indian Army did in 1971, the PT-76 could surprise its attackers and cross terrain that no other tank could. Unfortunately, PT-76s were quite often operated as a medium or MBT, and lacked support from heavier tanks, like originally intended. It is also valid that the tank was doomed from the start in terms of armament. It is possible that Soviet designers underestimated the evolution of medium and light tanks in the West, claiming that the gun was very adequate for World War II era medium tanks like the Panzer IV, but did not foresee the heavy armor or tanks like the M48 Patton. Even against contemporary light tanks like the AMX-13 or M41 Bulldog, the PT-76 was inferior in general combat terms, lacking in firepower, speed and armor. The PT-76, however, did excel over its rivals in mobility in rough environments, like swamps, deep muds, snow, and of course, water bodies. And that concludes this video. You can find other articles and more information regarding the PT-76 on our website. Ratings, comments, and subscriptions would be greatly appreciated. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit. We also have a link to our Discord community server in the description below. If you would like to help us continue and refine our work, also continue donating to our Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help us enhance and design new articles and features. Until next time, keep us in your sights.